my ancestors, my ancestors, my ancestors. E inanlatitzen in itself, in the Chamorro language. Liti is to stir. Uniliti. Uniliti e uh, cafe. I'm stirring the coffee, mixing it. Uliliti, I am stirring. That's the base word. Zan is a suffix marker in Chamorro, which means place of. So litetzen, meaning a place of stirring. Why do the Chamorros call that Litetzen? It's because in Chamorro they have this uh, expression called Mabirantanu. It's where the land curvatures. And when the land curvatures, where the curvature is, two ocean currents are meeting. The cost is like a whirlpool. That's why the waters there are very treacherous. Litetz, and you have to be very careful. Definitely, the spirits of our ancestors are still there and can be felt there. So when you do walk in, actually when you drive into Litex and you, you do feel that it is a powerful place, uh, when you go into the caves, it's like instantly there's something that over overwhelms you that, that yes, there is an energy there that is still very pure and still very connected to uh, the people who once lived there, you know, and uh, it, especially in the, the Lari site that um, has just it has just recently been rediscovered. I think a lot of people knew, obviously, that there were Lati there, um, but now they're really starting to, to study them and see what is there. Uh, and so I've had uh, the the privilege of being able to go to this Lati site, and it is it's it's a very quiet and and you you enter the space and you can really feel. Uh, that the spirits are still there, but also you can kind of feel what their life must have been like. It is almost as Makandalu as in a temple. That time was locked. Thousand Matulaika, and it remained the way it did, the way it was thousands of years ago. That's Litetsen. Then Genuntumu Historia, when you know the story of the site, or an insight, and even Masaya Tuntumo, then Genumarmo Gui, the stone Lili Itinano, when you're looking at the plants, you're looking at the environment, you're looking at the landscape, Toronisti, it's telling you, Hafa, why, Namanyaga Gui, why the ancient people live there. You can feel it. It's not uh, difficult to sense that. Then when you start looking at the Lattie sets and how they are aligned, its composition, you start feeling that hey, Ginlun Tiempo at one time, Manyaga Grini Tauto people lived in this environment. Gwela zan gwela, dankalu zan megay na mina aasi, pinna panhalu maam guni gisagan miju, ipinelun miju para hamini manakapi famagu un tautay tanu. Dankalu zan megay na mina aasi, na in sabladzi ham animan madula lak ham zu guini gisagan miju. Matu zan megay na piniti loman dangkulu agadisin tun mami na impiluji ham para benlii manganan manu ham. Saina maasi. Saina maasi. What I said is that we are here and we give you grateful thanks for leaving behind what you've left us for us to see here. These ruins are from almost 500 years ago, 1675, when the Spaniards came up here and sacked and burned the village of a thriving village of almost 400 villagers, moving them, if not killed, moving them down to either Tangisan or uh, Tomhum, making those larger villages than they are. 
through the ruins you would see just as they had left them when they were ousted. Pottery everywhere. If you must pick up a piece of pottery just to get the connection and the feel to what our people, please do so and put it back. Now joining me now with more perspective on this is a member of the military, the United States Marine Corps, and a proud Marine, Major Darren Alvarez. Major, always good to see you. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for having me. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about this because, you know, you reached out to us um, and very wisely so, and we've talked about this, you know, off camera and everything like that. And there seems to be a bit of a misconception about exactly what the scope of responsibility will be and exactly what types of territories uh, will be affected and the, and the land. So let's go ahead and break that down. Okay, so what we're talking about is the actual preferred alternative that the Navy and the Marine Corps have figured out, which is in this draft supplemental environmental impact study or statement, excuse me. Then I actually brought a graphic to show where exactly it is. Mm -hmm. So what this does is this shows a 3D image of the top of the cliff. That's where the actual range itself will go. Now there is associated with a range what's called a surface danger zone. Now what that is, is it's a safety buffer area. Mm -hmm. Okay, It's a restriction on time. So we don't want people down there or in certain areas when those ranges are being used. With all the talk about Retidian and the proposal for a surface danger zone, members of the Guam legislature wanted to see for themselves. It's very unfortunate because we learned so much in terms of about a thousand of our ancient graves are, are here and the pictographs that are here, hand prints that are there. And, you know, we were told basically that take a look at it right now, take a picture, because this might even be the last time that anyone will ever be able to, to see it. The live fire training range is actually um, going to be at Northwest Field, which is above La Texan in Anderson Air Force Base. And so uh, in the record of decision for the realignment of the Marines to Guam, um, for what was called the Supplemental Environmental Impact Statement, um, it was decided that instead of originally, originally the Navy had wanted to place their live fire training range com complex at Pogget, um, but the community was obviously very uh, concerned about this and worked together to basically stop that. And part of those efforts included a lawsuit. So uh, according to the NEPA or the National Environmental Protection Act, uh, when the U.S. Navy uh, wants to use a space like Pocket, they have to have looked at other alternatives as well, and they didn't do that. And so they had to go back and take a look at other locations on Guam where there could where they could place this firing range complex. And so uh, they did a separate EIS, which is the SEIS, the Supplemental Environmental Impact Statement, and they looked at uh, having it at Pocket or Route 15, at Fena, and at Northwest Field. And so then the preferred alternative that they selected was Northwest Field. And so according to that record of decision, um, the range would be above La Texan, but it has what's called a surface danger zone, meaning that when the range is in use, anything within that surface danger zone is closed to the public and so a large part of the the wildlife refuge and of Latexan is included in that surface danger zone to include all of these significant historic properties I was just discussing um, the Laddie sites that were recently rediscovered a lot of the beach uh, some of the caves are all included in the surface danger zone which actually extends out into the ocean and there are a lot of people who still fish there um, that will be affected and so uh, according to that record of decision and EIS the um, those ranges, so it's not just one firing range, it's a series of ranges, those ranges would be in use for up to 36 weeks of the year, which means for most of the year, uh, Latexan will not be accessible to the community. And so what makes the um, the, rain, the surface danger zone so large is that one of these ranges is a multi-purpose machine gun range. And so uh, it means that anything uh, within that danger zone cannot be accessed, right? It's really very disheartening to say, at the least, that this is what is going to happen. And how one justifies that, I'm not here to, to make any justification. But I'm just saying that in the history 
of this side of the Tetson that was a thriving ancient Chamor community disrupted is that historic sites, sacred sites, areas and sites that reveal the historical past of a place. Zengen Matsule, when it is destroyed. Kisinya Ma Tsulitati, as in a temple. These sites in English are irreplaceable. And so that was very upsetting for a lot of people, just the idea that the military wanted to take more land and that it was such sacred land that we would no longer be able to access. Now it's harder and it's been harder for us to get the community to sort of rally around La Texan in the same way because in their imagination they think that it's still federal property. But I think what's important for us to understand is that while the federal government may occupy the space, the the land still belongs to the original landowners. The artifacts and the history contained there belong to the Chamorro people. The Chamorro people will always have ownership of that space. And whether and it's up to us how we want to protect it. So I really believe that if the community rallied together in the same way we did for Pocket for La Texan, we could we could change it and we should change the, the fate of this space because it's very amazing, it's beautiful, it's important, it is educational and it belongs to our people and we shouldn't just let it go so that the military can practice their weapons. <laughs> land was created. My ancestors, my ancestors, my ancestors.